If you're running Facebook ads and you don't have conversion tracking set up, you're making a huge mistake. You don't want to run one cent through an advertising platform without having tracking set up. And so today we're going to walk through the how to and the why of setting up Facebook ads conversion tracking. And I know the why because I've managed over $50 million worth of advertising spend for the largest startups in Silicon Valley. And we're gonna do the how together for my website called The Gift Jack. And I'll show you how you can do it for your business step by step. <laughs> So this is my Facebook ads account for thegiftyack.com, my website. It's an affiliate website that I just started recently. And I'm gonna start running some Valentine's Day ads here next week. And right now I have my campaign, my ad sets, and all my ads set up. We walked through that process in previous tutorial videos for Facebook. Make sure you check those out. But I wanna make sure that I'm ready to go on the conversion side. So the first step here, so we're gonna to wanna to go up to Events Manager. And this is going to show us our pixel information that we set up in a previous tutorial video. And you can see that down here, we have some events. Page view is automatically created by Facebook. These two, I think I had inadvertently set up, but we're going to go through the process together. One important distinction before we jump in to Facebook ads conversion setup is the distinction on Facebook for standard events and custom events. Those are different in the eyes of Facebook. A standard event are some predefined actions that Facebook has already cataloged within the, the pixel setup. There are somewhere between 13 and 15 standard events, if I recall correctly. And they generally share very common names. So add to cart, purchase, sign up, submit. Those types of words are already set up as standard events. And so if you use any of those conversion events on your website, it's very easy to just plug and play those it's okay to have different events on your website be tied to standard events that don't share commonality and name so there are a couple ways that we can add facebook conversion events to the website the first being through the api we're gonna not do that since it's more technically savvy to do that um, but what we can choose is this option is to set up your pixel on your website we've already done that and so now we can click this to add different pixel code or different event code to our website the easiest way is going to be to open up this event setup tool and we'll walk through how to do that on my website so you can see how you could easily set it up on your website however there's another option here called install events using code which is a, a manual grab of the actual event code that we can place inside of a, a tag manager like google tag manager very similar to the process that we did for the google ads conversion tracking which is a great tutorial you should go check it out if you haven't and so th these are the two options that we're going to be able to select something called an event setup and so we're just going to click this and we're going to go to our website called thegiftyak.com and what this is going to do is it's going to load any event that we currently have on the page and allow us to track either button clicks or track url links so there's nothing that we necessarily want to track right now on the home page as from an event standpoint i'm going to show you my conversion event so as you can see on this this page of mine that i'm advertising for amazon products through best of giftless curated giftless and i want to be able to track anybody who clicks out to amazon either through my image the button or this link these are all links out to amazon and i know that i can do it with a piece of code because we did it with google ads but i want to be able to do it easily with this event setup tool. So the first one I'm going to try is I'm going to try to track a button. And as you can see, many, many, many opportunities have popped up from Facebook. Facebook knows every element on my website that leads to another page, right? And gives us the ability to select those. Now, the challenge with this option for me and my website is I have just in this list, I have, you know, 30 different items, 30 different button clicks. And then at some point, we're going to have hundreds of articles. And so it doesn't make sense for me to go through and individually tag every single box here for every new article that I make, right? So this is not a scalable strategy for me to track conversions. For you, it might, right? If you only have one button, maybe on your home screen that you're looking to track, this is reasonable. For instance, if I was just trying to trick, track how many people clicked these menu items up here, well, that's not bad. I can just select all five of them and it will live on every page. With these, these are all individual links, so I can't do it through this tool. But if I did, and I wanted to say, well, anytime somebody clicks that button, I would select the event type. Let's call it a purchase for, this, for the sake of argument. And then it's gonna come up with different variables and values 
values that it wants me to include. But I don't have a currency or value for any of this. So I'm not selling a product directly. So I'm just gonna say do not include and then I'll confirm. Okay. So now I can test this, even though it's only one button, I can test if it's working. And to do that, I can come back here and go to test events and I'll just take this URL and I'm gonna open the website. If I click this image that I've tagged, I should see the purchase event pop up, which I do. So this is, this is working correctly. Now, here's the problem. If I click this image, I don't get a purchase event, right? Which is the biggest problem with selecting this option for the Facebook event tool. So let's go back. I'm going to delete this purchase event. So we've tried track new button. We know what we can theoretically do there. We're just going to keep going down the list, right? We're going to try now to track a URL. All right. Well, in this case, it's saying, hey, you can track an event using a URL. Generally, this is for businesses that end up having a thank you page. And what does a thank you page mean? Well, if you're selling an item on your website, or if you have a sign up or a lead generation form on your website, generally after somebody goes through that process, puts in their information, either hits purchase or sign up, you can kick them to a, another page right? That just says, hey, thank you. Here's your confirmation of whatever event you took. And you can pixel that page. So you'll know that anytime somebody lands on that page, that your event has been fired, they've done whatever you were hoping they would do, either purchase or sign up, submit a lead, whatever it is. I don't necessarily have that, right? Because I'm kicking them to Amazon. So let's go through the same process and say, well, what if we set a purchase event here and then URL contains the only reasonable one that we could do is amazon.com. But as you see, it's not letting me do that, right? It's not letting me say, well, if somebody goes to Amazon, then they become part of the event or they're tracked on that event. No, it would have to be a thank you page from the gift jack. So again, this will also not work for my business. So unfortunately, the Facebook event setup tool is not going to work for my business. But you saw how quickly, if it did, that we could tag the whole site with different conversion events, and we would be good to go in just a couple of minutes there. So make sure you check it out on your business. All right, so we're going to come back here and we're going to try to install the code manually. So the first requirement here is you have to have the base code already set up on your website for every page. And we've done that. We've already installed our pixel previously in the first Facebook ads tutorial video. So check that out if you need to know and understand how to do that. And then we've talked about what standard events are and what custom events are. I don't need to track any custom events. Every, every event that I need is going to live in the standard events section. And so I'm going to be able to follow these instructions relatively easily to get this conversion tracking set up on my end. And here are some event names that exist that you can track as a standard event in Facebook. So you'll see that purchase is right here, or you could change that word purchase and just substitute add payment info or initiate checkout or add to cart. I'm gonna change it to add to cart so you get to see how I do that. Facebook doesn't have this view anymore in their pixel setup, unfortunately. So it's a little deceiving on how you actually install this, but that's okay, that's why you're watching this video. All right, so we're gonna to go to our Google Tag Manager and we're gonna set up a new tag. So we're gonna call this Facebook Conversion Add Click. And then within the actual type here, we're gonna choose Custom HTML. The reason why there's no Facebook theme to pick there is because Facebook and Google are very much competitors and they, they don't like to help each other out there. So we're gonna paste in, we're gonna paste in that code that we got, but we also need to add some things. We need to add the word script here, backslash script here. And then we're also gonna remove this data from the example. And we're gonna change this from purchase to add to cart. That's the event that I wanna track. And then finally, we want to have this trigger based off of an event. So I'm gonna walk through the steps of how we set up the Google trigger for Google ads, but I can just reuse this. And now I should be all set with the Facebook click. And we can test that, by the way, by hitting preview. We can go to our website, thegiftyak.com. This will load the page for us, and we'll just go to any one of our articles. And then you'll see here in the debugger, do you see how now we're on the 25 copper anniversary gifts? And then all of these tags fire or don't fire. Well, you can see here, the Facebook conversion didn't fire and the Google conversion didn't fire. That's because we haven't clicked 
on an ad. So we're gonna click one of the ads. We'll go back to our tag assistant and you'll see that not only did the Google ad conversion fire, but so did our new Facebook ad click conversion. So our conversion event is set up. So I can come back here and I can save those changes by hitting submit. All right, so now that we're back in the tag manager, we've saved that change, we have our event set up. I wanna show you how we actually got to that point because it's a little deceiving on how easy that is. So this is the Facebook event that we set up, right? And down here we had this, this tag called Google Trigger Conversion Amazon Ad Click. And what this is, it's a trigger that fires when somebody clicks on a link that goes to Amazon. Now, how did I set this up, right? Because this is the key missing piece. If you're gonna do this as well, you need to know how to set this up. Well, the first step is you come to variables and you click this configure button and you wanna come down here and you wanna make sure that every element with, with, within this clicks table is, is highlighted, all right? So what this effectively does is tells Google Tag Manager, hey, you can use any of these attributes to understand if we converted a user. And in this case, we're gonna use click URL. And what does click URL mean? Well, if somebody's on our website and clicks a button that takes them to a new URL, we wanna be able to track what that is, right? And we wanna call it, we wanna say that that click URL contains amazon.com because that's where we're sending traffic. If we were sending traffic to espn.com, right? And trying to understand how many people went there, we would just change it to be ESPN.com. First step is to add these built-in variables. And then you also wanna go back to tags and you wanna make something called a conversion linker, right? So it's a it's a easy tag that's already set up and you can just, you can go in there and select conversion linker, save it, and then fire it on every page. So this will tell Google Tag Manager, hey, I want you to listen for these triggers on every page of the website. And if one of them, if somebody does one of those events, I want you to record that event. So after built-in variables, then you go to conversion linker. And then after the conversion linker, you actually want to set up your trigger. Okay. And so I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this just um, ads trigger, right? This is an ads trigger for both Facebook and Google. And what this is saying is if somebody clicks on any element on our website and the click URL contains amazon.com, I want you to record that Google Tag Manager. All right. And you can see there are other items you can select here. Remember we had those built-in variables, we selected all these click elements. Well, if you decide, hey, I actually want to, I want to fire an event based off of a class or an element or an ID or a target or some text, whatever, right? You can do that in here. And there's other built-in variables as well that you can use. So make sure you explore the needs there for your website or for your business. For me, I just need click URL and I just need to track anytime somebody goes to Amazon. If I start advertising for Etsy or for Uncommon Goods, I'm going to come back here and I'm gonna build the same trigger, except I'm gonna, instead of Amazon, I would write Etsy.com, right? Or Uncommon Goods or whoever. So once you have the trigger set up, that allows you to go back to tags. And once you set up your conversion event like we did earlier, you just say, hey, fire this event for Facebook whenever somebody does this thing on my website, which in my case is clicks a link to go to Amazon. So you can see, if I minimize this, we have this new add to cart event that we just set up in our Google Tag Manager, and we've received one click, and that was seven minutes ago, and that's right. Now, the power of conversion tracking for Facebook ads is enormous. It is gonna unlock so much potential for your business if you're not already using conversion tracking that you should immediately work on getting that set up if you're if you're advertising and spending money. It's gonna unlock the ability to use conversion targeting, which is huge in Facebook's ability to optimize and find users within population. So if you have, I mean, your campaigns and your ad sets are targeting certain groups of interests, lookalike audiences or demographics. And if you give Facebook more data about how those users are interacting on your website, and which events are important to you, it's gonna make your campaigns so much stronger in terms of generating whatever business outcome you're looking to do, whether it's signups 
or whether it's driving sales and revenue. We were able to set up our Facebook ads conversion tracking relatively quickly. We went through a couple different ways that you can do it. The easiest way is to use the event tool where you can basically just click and set a conversion event. For my website, unfortunately, it doesn't work because I need to set many of the same events on a lot of different buttons. And so I had to do it through Google Tag Manager, but Again, relatively painless setup there, and we have the full instructions on how to do it in the video, so you shouldn't have any trouble. Stay tuned for the next video because it's gonna be even more important than this one.